Praise the Lord. We are so excited to be here again with you. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. From the time we came to the front of this building, we felt just the presence of the Lord, such great love. We feel so welcome here, and we just want to thank you so much. Uh, looking at the wall, the verses that are on the wall are some of my favorite verses. First, love your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So you have to love yourself so that you can love your neighbor. That's, that is the, what the gospel tells us. The other one is like, go into the whole world and preach the gospel, baptizing people, teaching them, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the, the Holy Spirit. And that will be with you always, even to the ends of the world. Those are wonderful verses, verses that we need to live by. First, you need to love yourself, love your neighbor, and then go. This is, this is exactly what your church stands for. And you know, there's such great encouragement for us coming back from Romania uh, to, to just worship with you. This is what we miss the most. Because there, we're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we are uh, in the southeastern part of Romania. It's uh, an area that is called Dobroja. And uh, the whole area of South Romania is unevangelized. But this particular area is like well, only 1% people are know about the Lord. So uh, we're, it, it's just like in the Muslim countries, uh, you know, when 1% uh, uh, is about in the 1040 window, if you heard about the countries in the 1040 window, they don't, they have 0 0.5 to 1% uh, Christians. And that's, this is the story in Romania, in Europe, where uh, you would think that it would be different. So we draw encouragement while we are in the field from you, from your prayers, from your giving, from your generosity, from your emails, from your notes, and just knowing that every Sunday morning, the people of God are gathering together, worshiping the King of Kings. You know, worship is warfare. What you are doing through worship, what we've done this morning, is stand and proclaiming God as, as the Savior of the entire world, the one that is bringing his kingdom from one end of the world to another. This is what we're proclaiming. We're proclaiming that the enemy is defeated. Death can no longer hold us. He, the, death, the death and the enemy has no, uh, no, more, uh, the, no longer hold on us because we all are children of the living God. And we're an army. We are powerful. If Jesus uh, commanded us to go in the whole world, it means that he said, in Acts chapter uh, 1 verse 9 said don't you know depart from Jerusalem until you receive power and then you will be my witnesses and when the power came people the disciples were filled with so much boldness that in one day 3,000 came to the Lord and this is the power that lives in us and the Bible says again, if the power, the spirit of Christ, uh, uh, that, that the power that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. Your, you will be brought to life. You will be brought to new life in Christ, new strength, and you will be able to be God's witness. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to be able to come back and report after just three um, years of ministry there, three and a half, we are um, able to come back and tell you that everything that we told you before we left, that we have our vision to do, God has accomplished. And that's through you. And you know, uh, this is a report, it's, uh, and beyond, beyond our comprehension. Both of us grew, in, grew up in Romania, and it happened that at the end of communism, we were called to go back, and uh, since uh, 2009, we've been taking teams, and we worked in a, a mission school training local uh, people because of course, communism left the country devastated and uh, uh, told them that there is no God. And uh, uh, people were so disillusioned after communism that we felt compelled to go back uh, to preach the gospel to, to uh, Romania. And um, 
uh, the country, you know, we had the both of the second, uh, first and second world war. Uh, Romania was involved in them, so uh, the country was devastated from one empire to one regime after another, and uh, um, uh, the the people were hopeless. And uh, but no longer the the hope of Jesus Christ came to uh, to Romania, and uh, when we realized the need. Uh, for, because of the shortage of ministers in in Romania, we we felt compelled to to go back and uh, uh, begin planting churches there. Um, the area that we are part of ministry is uh, Dobroja. It's called Dobroja. It's an unreached region of the southeast Romania with a million people and uh, only 1,200 Christians, as we told you. Um, uh, about a quarter of them are Muslims. Then we have the Tatars, which is an Irish people's group. Uh, and uh, they live right there in the Broja. And they don't have a church yet. They don't have a Bible yet in their own uh, language. But the Lord has brought the light of the gospel to the Broja and to the, to the Tatars. Uh, we have gypsies and uh, Macedonians and uh, uh, all kinds of challenges. Uh, there, are, there is spiritual darkness, of course, uh, caused by Islam and uh, paganism, uh, witchcraft, occult, incest, domestic violence, um, Turkish girls being sold into uh, marriage as uh, early as the age of 12. Um, kids only go to school to a fourth grade education in the Muslim villages. Uh, we have villages in which 90% of the kids don't go to school. So you imagine what a 90% illiterate community would look like. Uh, but not no longer, because uh, the gospel is being uh, brought to, to all these villages. Um, and uh, we, we started in uh, the southeast part, at the, um, that where that little arrow is. That's where we are located. Um, and the corner that you see there, the red corner, that's a, uh, we, in our next term, that is a place where we want to plant a church and expand. We are in Banyasa, and we've already influenced a large portion of that red corner. Uh, God is doing miracles, is opening doors for us. Um, I remember one particular girl, you know, um, I mentioned that Turkish girls are sold into marriage early as the age of 12. And uh, one particular girl came to one of our um, women ministries one evening. And uh, she had been sold into marriage five times by her father. Um, and the blessed husband took her to Italy and sold her, uh, sold her into prostitution, to a brothel. God miraculously delivered her from that. And uh, she arrived home, ended up in our meeting. She gave her life to the Lord, and it was one of those conversions that just just so beautiful. She, I mean, she felt the Holy Spirit and God's presence right there. She was asking everybody, God is here. Don't you feel him? Can you feel God? He's right here with us. And what a change in her life. Now she's married. She has four children, and she's thinking, taking care of other. Her whole Turkish family, Muslim family, came to the Lord. And uh, she is an influence and a leader in her community. And this is how the Lord does it. You know, we bring the gospel, we, uh, and God equips them. And he raises them in no time, trains them, and he sends them. Uh, we have uh, miracles and wonders happening in the, especially in the Muslim country and Muslim villages, and I'll tell you more about that. Uh, we, of course, we have uh, opposition from the uh, religious Orthodox, uh, 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 Orthodox religion. They were the state religion in Romania during communism, and they still think that they, they are in power. But uh, the Lord is doing miracles. We had one priest that was opposing us for a few years. And uh, we prayed, we said, God, you either move him out of here or save his soul. He got, just pa this past August, he got a phone call from his higher up archbishop. I'm not sure what happened, and I don't need to, really need to know. But, uh, that guy told him, in two hours, you ought to pack your, uh, to your luggage, take your family, and run, because 
There is a bulldozer coming to destroy your house right now. And he was out. In a few hours, he was out. The bulldozer didn't come, but that, that's, you know, that's the threat he got. You know, and, but he's gone. He's vanished. We don't know where he is. And uh, there was another man in another village that opposed us. We would go to take the children for ministry, and uh, he would come in an hour before us, and he would take the children to a zoo, to who knows where, uh, just to distract us. Um, and uh, he built a building uh, there to um, bring the children and to, to keep them away from our ministry. Well, that building was demolished in one night. There was, uh, it was just a hurricane that came here blaming us for doing it. Like, no, we didn't do it. God did it. But, uh, but he's gone. He's gone out of the village. And God fights us our battles because of your prayers, because of your, your uh, standing and, and praying and taking authority against the forces of evil in the whole world. Mike is going to tell you about our strategy in uh, um, the ministry that we are assigned to in uh, Dobroja. Would you put the first picture, please? Okay. Brothers and sisters, we are here to report to you the gospel of Jesus Christ has power. Has power to change lives, and that is for eternity. We uh, went to Romania, and the Lord gave us a strategy how to reach Romania for Jesus. We do our part, but God is doing his part. And I'm reporting to you how it's your ministry through us in Romania. How you do, how your money goes, how souls and lives are changed forever. The Lord gave us a strategy to reach Romania in four folds. First of all, to... Um, would you put the next the next slide? Sorry, I'm not. Okay. It's reaching out. I can help by thinking if you have only one son, if you have only one child as parent, what you gonna do with? How you gonna train him? How careful you gonna invest in him? Because you have only one child. I can help, I think, and you may heard this, God has only one son, and he made him a missionary. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be yourself a missionary? We are the sons of God. We are called, all of us, to be missionary. Even if we go, if we pray, if we give, we are missionary. And the way the Lord gave us a strategy to reach out Romania is to go wherever lost souls are. We're going where they are. That is fishing. That's when Jesus told Peter, I'll make you a fisherman of men. We have to go. If you are here in Pottstown or wherever you are in the neighborhoods, we need to go where, the, where the, the lost souls are. We are reaching out. How we are reaching out? With love. The way Jesus did, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, with love. And we present 
the, the word of God with love so they could feel that, they could accept that. We go where they are. And then we plant churches. If you put the next slide, this is still reaching. We, <clears throat> uh, I'm not, I should say something about these pictures. We, uh, uh, by the grace of God, the Lord gave us so much favor with the local authorities and we take, uh, uh, they are giving us buildings um, or uh, culture centers or uh, um, soccer fields to have meetings. And this is the grace of God. This is the moment for us to be in Romania. We are Romanians. And because of that, probably uh, we have more advantage than other foreign missionaries. And the Lord knows that. And that's why the, the Lord strategically uses us to go to do this kind of outreaches. We had this summer, 10 teams came from the United States and we did a lot of outreaches in the area where uh, the gospel never went so far yet. And you may heard what right for someone to hear so many times the gospel of salvation, of Jesus Christ, of the kingdom of God. And those people not having the chance to have it, to, to hear at least once. And we are there for them to hear so many for the first time because the area we are strategically placed by the Lord, it's uh, a Muslim area. They don't know about Jesus Christ, but they love prayers. They love to, to be ministered to. Uh, would you put next picture, please? And then, we, uh, after we reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ, we do the training. You're looking for your money to be invested in the right place. And all of us wants to do that. So, as people of God, we are looking into the right people to invest. So after we plant churches, they are rich with the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we plant churches because the houses are so small, we cannot feed so many comes to the Lord. We cannot feed them in the small houses what already existed there. So we are looking to venues to build or to buy a building or to do something for more people to be able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we are planting uh, churches there. So far, we have two plans. And the uh, next term, we already, the Lord already established another three churches to plant. We have already a lot of people giving their lives to the Lord in those villages, but we have no place uh, to uh, minister, to uh, meet, to meet them. Uh, in the summertime, we meet them in the parks and different areas, but uh, uh, what we're going to do in the winter? And I know the Lord will open even more uh, places to plant churches. Uh, after we do that, then we train people. We are investing in those people, like I said, how you will invest your money, how you invest your time, we are looking for to invest in people of peace, of people of influence, so they can be the leaders of our, those areas where we establish and plant churches. Uh, this is the uh, Bonassa Community Center. Uh, if you want to put the, the big building of Bonassa Community Center, I would like to it's hard to do that, okay. Okay, then uh, we have a part of the Bonassa Community Center, which uh, in 2015, we moved in Bonassa, and the uh, Lord gave us favor with the mayor of the town, and uh, he helped us to buy the prime land in that uh, location, and uh, helped us uh, with the paperwork and all of the permits and uh, all of that, so, uh, in less than a year, we put this 
uh, over a thousand square uh, feet building, uh, uh, 10,000. I'm on a meter system right now. <laughs> so yeah, over 10,000 square feet uh, building. We uh, uh, built that in less than a year, which is a miracle from the Lord because in Romania, only the paper alone is taking a year or two uh, to have all of the permits and then uh, the building materials and uh, less alone, we are so far away from civilization, from uh, markets and from uh, uh, places to buy materials. The closest uh, concrete station is like over 100 kilometers away. And by the time the, the concrete truck comes, uh, the, most of the time they don't want to come so far because they are afraid the concrete will gonna um, harden in the truck because the roads are bad and takes us almost two hours one way to bring it. And it's the, the cost, the transportation cost is more than the material. But the Lord helped us to build this. What's the reason to build this? Is to serve the community. And we are serving the community in so many different ways with illiteracy. Like uh, um, my wife said, so many people Families, mom and dad, do not know how to write and read. How can they help their children? And their children don't go to school either. They do not have the, the, the basic needs for those children to go to school. So we are helping, we are serving them. And as we minister to the children, as we minister to, to uh, the parents, because uh, we want to train them to be able to sustain themselves. And mostly, uh, we want to invest in those who will become the future leader, leaders, spiritual leaders of that communities. And uh, it's so much to say, I know the time is not permitting me, but uh, the Lord gave us a good strategy. It's working so well. And we thank you so much for investing. And, and uh, uh, in us because the training what we do there is so beneficial and we thank you okay uh, he's letting me talk about the training <laughs> uh, this is uh, the church in Kujuk a village that we started uh, 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 we started meeting in a, in a classroom in a school uh, really small space with a lot of mold in it. We cleaned it up and we're, we've been meeting there for a few years and now we are uh, training people there but we also built a new church in, in that village and um, the lady that you see there is a, uh, comes from a Muslim uh, family. She was just baptized this summer along with her husband and her sister-in-law uh, We and uh, they are the future leaders of that village. This is, we, we want to multiply ourselves we don't want to go there and uh, just uh, you, you know preach the gospel and leave that's not that's not a good strategy but this is how we do it we, we leave leaders behind that will continue to uh, propagate into in the area and in uh, their other communities and the, the last one uh, if you keep going this is a this is the baptism and the next one is serving we serve people by uh, um, you know, sometimes we just have an uh, you know an outdoors picnic, <laughs> and uh, you know they are hungry and they come. They come uh, and we give them the gospel. We don't just give them the bread. Uh, Jesus told us to, you know, to take care of the poor, and uh, we uh, we care for them by uh, giving shoes to the children so that they can go back to school, giving them school supplies, uh, feeding them, uh, doing medical care in the uh, community center that we have. Uh, I have a medical cabinet where I also see patients, and uh, thank God I was blessed with an ultrasound machine and an EKG machine, and they don't have a lab. Uh, uh, all the way to Constanza from where we are, uh, they need to go re um, do their lab work an, uh, an hour and a half away. 
but we're hoping when we go back to have an, uh, uh, a few things that we can do, at least uh, the, the basic lab work tests for, for the people. And uh, uh, we, we can help them with emergencies because it's way too long to get to the uh, next. Uh, and this is a great ministry. You know, everybody that comes to our cabinet gets prayed for and gets ministered to. And we get those, uh, we start those relationships heart to heart. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, can you put the next picture? Uh, this is uh, uh, medical outreaches uh, in uh, two places. The whole village comes. We have uh, about 800 patients a week that we see when we have uh, medical outreaches. And everybody gets prayed for. Everybody gets witnessed to. This is, uh, this is what we do, and this is what we did in the last uh, uh, three years. The community center is now running. We have a couple that were our students at a school of missions, and they are doing the uh, literacy courses, the after-school courses. We have an MA that does medical uh, until I go back. And uh, job training, Mike forgot to mention that during the construction, we did not have construction workers. So we had to rely on locals. Mike trained them from holding a hammer and uh, hitting a nail all the way to, uh, you know, uh, electrical and uh, all, all the, the rest of the parts, tiling and roofing and all those things. So those people are now our constructors and we're gonna go and <laughs> do churches in other villages with them. And they, they are the ones in our absence that finish the church in Kujuk. So this is, this is how God works in, uh, you know, through, through your partnership with us. And we're just so happy about the work that the Lord has uh, allowed us to do. Uh, in uh, Romania. I would like to read to you a text from uh, 2 Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians, I, I don't know why my iPad went to something else here. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I wanted to push internet to me. Okay. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, we're going to uh, read from chapter uh, from uh, verse 16 it says from from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh we regard him thus no longer therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God has reconciling was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation all of us are entrusted with a message of reconciliation therefore we, all of us, are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But I would like to also read to you a verse in um, uh, verse 14, right before that, it says, For the love of Christ compel us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live to themselves, but for him who for their sake died, and he was raised, uh, and for whom he was raised. Jesus Christ compels us because of his love that he showed us. He loved us so. We, we heard the song. He loves us so much. And what can you do with so much love that he gives you? He compels you to love others, to love your neighbor, 